Told you I'd be back quicker than last time. So anyway, Nintendo's other big launch title for the Wii U ended up being the first HD outing of their main cash cow, Mario. But not some grand 3D entry like one might expect, but instead another entry into the 2D new Super Mario Bros. series. Which, in all honesty, struck me as a rather odd choice, as it doesn't really seem like a good way of showing off the console's new graphical capabilities and new control scheme. But I could be wrong, so let's find out if this title was a good way to demo the console, and more importantly, a good game overall, as we look at New Super Mario Bros. U one year on. I would start out by warning you that this review does have spoilers, but if you play pretty much any of the main 2D and 3D Mario adventures, or even some of the spin-off titles, you know the plot in its entirety. Bowser has kidnapped Princess Peach, again. It's up to Mario to save her, again. With the help of Luigi and two toads, again. Wait, that's only happened one time before. But still, you get what I mean. There's really nothing innovative about this plotline here. In fact, a lot of aspects in this game feel pretty derivative of previous titles in the Mario series, but we'll get to those when we get to them. But for now, let's tackle the most important thing first, the gameplay. Now overall, this is a solid 2D Mario platform experience that a lot of people have come to expect from the series. It's all about going from left to right or bottom to top and running, jumping, squashing enemies, what have you, just to reach the goal at the end. So same formula as the NES days, right down to the way the control scheme is set out. But I can't really blame them too much for this since it works, and really well at that. Only this time I think Mario has just a little too much inertia when he lands from a jump. It's easy to correct yourself for most of the game, but when the precision platforming comes into play, you just wish the jumping was a bit more precise too. Mario is of course sporting a boatload of power-ups again as usual. There's the standard fire flower to help him shoot fireballs, stars for brief invincibility, mini mushrooms to shrink Mario to a tiny size, enable him to move fast enough to run on water and even up walls now, a propeller mushroom to send Mario high into the air, an ice flower to freeze enemies with, and a penguin suit to do exactly the same as the ice flower, with the added benefits of Mario sliding on his stomach so he can attack enemies and break through blocks, have better control in the water, and just looks adorable. Yeah, the ice flower feels a bit redundant as a result. Surprisingly, there's only one new power-up this time around, although technically two. This power-up is the Super Acorn, which turns Mario into a flying squirrel and lets him glide through the air, cling to surfaces for extended periods of time when wall jumping, and Mario can also gain a pretty good boost to his jump with a shake of Wii remote. We can only do this once in the air before he lands. That's where the other new power-up comes in, the P Acorn, which allows Mario to boost through the air with his glide as many times as he wants, so it really makes it this game's equivalent of the P Wing. The other new additions to this game are the baby Yoshi that you can find scattered around the place. Pink Yoshi inflate by shaking the Wii Remote and can carry Mario through the air to pretty high heights. Blue Yoshi spit out bubbles when you shake them and they can be used to defeat enemies to get coins and power-ups from them, and if you're really skilled, unlike me, you can even use the bubbles to platform. Finally, the yellow Yoshi can be shaken to light up caves and stun enemies at incredibly close range. And that's it. Yeah, the yellow ones really suck. And as I briefly mentioned before, Mario is not alone on this venture. He is joined once again by his brother Luigi, a blue toad, Buckenberry, and a yellow toad, Ala Gold. Yes, they actually do have names. Kinda. The game is very similar to the Wii iteration of Mario in that it has a cooperative mode for up to four players and people can drop in and out as they please and choose whichever character they want. It really doesn't matter which character you play as however as all four of them play identically to each other. The only new addition on the co-op side of things is that a fifth person, or one of the first four if they're really coordinated enough, can use the Wii U gamepad to place platforms into levels to either help or hinder the other players. The gamepad's functionality feels ultimately tacked on for the sake of having the functionality there, and it can actually be kind of difficult to help people out as the screen moves along with their pace and it's kind of hard to grasp that pace when you're not one of the people playing the game. In the end it just ends up being more fun, and a lot easier, to screw over your friends. The game carries over a few of the same co-op issues found in the Wii game, in that players can still collide with each other when jumping, and the screen still freezes temporarily when players gain or lose power-ups or die, 
which can throw off other people's jumping and the general rhythm of the game. However, I can say that level design on the most part feels better for co-op play this time around. There's a lot more room for players to move around in and it removes a lot of the collisions because of this, but I can't fully endorse having a full set of four players. I'd say two players in a gamepad works about right in my opinion. In fact, the level design for this game feels really good all around with a great difficulty curve throughout the game, which ends up being a tiny bit sadistic towards the last part of it. Levels all have a really good flow to them and I can honestly never recall a time where I would call the game cheap for its enemy placement, or recall any outright bad levels. My absolute favourite level in the game is Flight of the Para Beetles, where Mario has to jump from beetle to beetle with little to no ground to stand on, and it's actually a whole lot of fun to try and keep from plummeting. Even if this level is a complete ripoff of a level from the Wii game. My main gripe with the levels in the game only really comes with the bosses in the towers and the castles of the game. With one exception, they've all been done before. Five of the seven tower bosses in the game are all Boom Boom. Another one is Kamek, and the bosses for the castles are all the Koopalings, with Bowser being the boss of the final castle. As if that's ever been done before. In a similar vein, while the levels are well designed, they take the same aesthetic tropes from nearly every other platformer. There's grass, desert, water, ice, swamp, rock, sky and lava. Hell, we even get the return of the old Mario series originals like the Giant and the Boo levels. I just wish there was something brand new and original with these tropes. It's not as if they do a bad job with these tropes at all, they all look perfectly fine. And in fact, I think the ice world looks outright gorgeous at times with some great lighting effects within the luminous objects and superb backgrounds. I'd also like to make a special mention to the beautiful level from the swamp world where everything looks like it's been painted straight onto the screen. And I just wish there was more unique visuals like that rather than the ones we've seen dozens of times before. The soundtrack to this game also feels incredibly derivative to me, and a majority of the songs in the game actually sound like they're taken straight out of other titles in the new Super Mario Bros. series, and no level theme truly stands out to me. That doesn't mean the music's bad necessarily, in fact it's pretty good whilst you're actually playing it, but when you put down the game you really don't remember any of it or want to listen to it again. The only music I clearly recall is the overworld theme which is the same throughout the game, but changes the instrumentation slightly depending on the world you're currently in, which serves to be a pretty nice way of tying everything together. And the one world that doesn't have this theme, Peach's Castle, has actually a really good, more sinister remix of the Peach's Castle theme from Mario 64. The final thing I want to talk about is challenge mode. It uses stages from the game and even some new custom ones for it to test players' skills in different ways like bouncing off enemies continuously for one-ups, or collecting all the coins in the stage, avoiding all the coins, getting through the stages entirely by gliding, or simply completing a speedrun of the stage. It's actually pretty fun and can get incredibly challenging in the later parts of it, and just continues to show how good the team were at designing these levels and giving up some genuinely unique ideas for these challenges. Overall I think I can sum up this game pretty easily. It's just another 2D Mario game and I think- Hello? Oh yeah, this game got DLC. Super Luigi U. Last year was the year of the Ouija in which Nintendo released a bunch of games based on the Ouija, and it also ended up being Nintendo's biggest year for losses, way to go Green Machine. The Luigi U DLC would eventually go on to be sold on its own as a retail title, but since it started out as this game's DLC I'm going to talk about it here. The Ouija U actually has the same amount of levels in it as Mario U, essentially doubling your experience. However, the difficulty is cranked up to the extreme in most of these courses, which isn't helped by the fact that all levels have a 100 second time limit on them, which forces you to rush through it all, which also isn't helped by the fact that you have to do it with Luigi's physics, which make him a lot more slippery than his brother, but at least it lets him jump higher. The game also features co-op, and my same comments about the co-op in Mario U also apply here, but the main difference between the two is that Luigi U introduced a new character, Nabbit, a rabbit-like enemy who shows up every so often in Mario U to steal an item which you can nab back from him. Nabbit is the game's easy mode, and he can't be affected by enemy attacks, only being killable by things like being crushed or falling down pits and the like. Whilst Nabbit is unable to be powered up at all, any power-up that Nabbit actually does grab will be exchanged for one-ups at the end of every stage. It's fun to play as just to cheese stages with him, but unfortunately player 1 can't use him as player 1 is always locked into play as Luigi. 
Luigi U ends up being a fun time for any hardcore Mario or platforming enthusiast, but honestly Mario U is just the better game all around, and if you have to choose one or the other, pick Mario, but as DLC goes, doubling the length of the game for a small amount of the price is pretty great in my book, so check it out if you can. Or if you have a look around, you might be able to find it on a bundle disc like I did. So back to what I was saying, overall I think I can sum this game up pretty easily, it's just another 2D Mario game. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just if you've played a 2D Mario game before, then you know what to expect and it may not do enough stuff to convince you to buy it. But saying that, it is easily the best 2D Mario experience that's been out in years. It's too premature to say that it will hold up to likes of Mario 3 or World, but it's still the best in the new Mario Brothers series. Sure, it uses some of the same concepts and ideas as previous games in the series, but if you can get beyond that and the aesthetics, then it's really a great game here and a fun time to be had with friends. It's definitely a title I can recommend to those who are Wii U, but I recommend it slightly less than Nintendo Land. I just enjoyed my time with that game a bit more. So that was Nintendo's first party lineup for the launch of the Wii U. And it really is a Nintendo console without them actually releasing a Mario Kart for it. But since Mario Kart 8 is a ways off from doing it, what could I look at in the meantime? Ah, a Sonic racing game. I'm sure I can't go wrong with this.